I'm resetting the NHL with a fantasy draft and will be selecting 20 players to build a team. For today's challenge, I will be sorting by the defensive category and need to take a player from the top star group. I will, however, be able to filter by forwards or defense because otherwise we're just going to get way too many defensemen. Once the draft is complete, we will assemble the lines and simulate franchise mode with the hopes of winning a Stanley Cup. The team we will be using for this defensive draft is the Minnesota Wild. Hey, did you know that their logo was a bear? I know. Well, well, well. If it isn't Jabroni, don't even think about it. Let's say that we get draft pick number 19. I don't know. Again, it's just the first number that came to my head. I was very close. You probably won't be able to tell too much, but if my voice does anything weird in this video, I'm kind of getting over a cold. I don't know. It was really weird. I don't think it really matters to sort right now because there's going to be a bunch of forwards and a bunch of defensemen regardless. Brendan Dillon is the five-star defensive cutoff, so anybody above him is good. For some reason, Barks just seems like the right player to go with here. A very defensive-minded forward, so let's get it started with 92 overall. Sasha Barkov. This time we have Sergachev in up. Four and a half star shooting category. 90 overall, 9.5. So we're taking two pretty expensive players off the bat here. But I do want to try to get some goal scoring. Funny enough, Marshy has five star defense. Left winger. So we're going to go with him. We have all forwards so far. I'm definitely going to take a defenseman next. The five star defense category is dwindling. Ekblad seems like a good player. Pulak also seems very good. What say you? We start our defensive core with three and a half green star Ryan Pulak. If you know you know. We could have Pulak and Ekholm as our first pair, and we will. In fact, looking at the screen, I think Ryan O'Reilly was the last player on here to have five-star defense, so it's just the first page. That's all we have left. If Anze is still here, we gotta go with him. And he is not. We have to choose from Larson and up, Ryan O'Reilly and Philip Deneau. No, we also have Lindholm, so there's three forwards here, actually. I, for one, am going to select Brett Pesci. Also should definitely be taking a goalie, like, very soon. Philippe Dano has three abilities. He's a centerman. Sign him up. We still got a couple of 86s here, which is surprising. Definitely thought we were getting an 84. I mean, he's making five mil less. You gotta go with Cameron here, right? Markstrom could be very good for the New Jersey Devils. We're gonna find out. But right now, I am going with Mr. Talbot. Only two players with five-star defense left with Brendan Dillon and Brian Dumoulin. We're gonna have a lot of defensive defensemen. But, well, Welcome to the team, Brendan Dillon. Only because he is the last player with five-star defensive category, I'm going with Doomlin, but then we have to sort by forwards after this. Wow, we don't even have four and a half star. We only have four. We can choose from Yanni, Gord, and above. We have Fogel, Kalorn. I'm actually probably going to take someone that I never draft, and that is going to be Logan Couture. Another centerman, yeah, making eight million. To be fair, his faceoffs is only 75. Boone Jenner's got the four-star defense. You know what? False alarm. Going Warren Fogle. Felino is the cutoff for the defensive category. And we're gonna bring him back to the wild. This is definitely gonna make things interesting cap-wise, but I'm gonna go with Yanni Gord. We need a cheap backup, and Jonathan Quick making 825k seems like a steal to me. I was trying to find a very specific player. So obviously we gotta take in the top of the defensive stars, whatever that might be, which is four. And I wanted a right handed defenseman that was not a defensive defenseman. We're only going to have five mil for our last four picks, but it's got to be done. Justin Schultz is getting drafted immediately. Another centerman, but who cares? This guy's a freebie. Making 775? Absolutely. All right, we might need to bend the rule a little bit here because... We only have Kalorn and up, and we are definitely going over the salary, which I don't want to do. It's just going to be our depth players anyway at this point, so let's go with Fisher because he's got three and a half star making 1.1, which we could make work. You know what? No, screw it. We're going strictly based off of this defensive category. We are not abiding by the salary cap this time. Kalorn, join the team. And now we have three players to choose from. Another centerman. He does have very good face-offs. Center is typically the most defensive forward position, so I guess it kind of checks out why we have so many of them. And for our last player, we'll take another centerman, Casey Sezikis. We might be over the salary cap, but I've heard that that's kind of the new thing. All the cool teams are doing it, you know what I mean? Being over the salary cap is so in right now. Just looking at our roster, yeah, this is a very defensive team. I have no idea how we're gonna do, but we're gonna find out. It's going to be very interesting to see if we have chemistry because we do have like 8 million centers on this team. But you know what? A lot of them were duo position. So it could work out. That's not bad. I'm going to move Philip Deneau up. 
because this stays a plus one and I kind of want the abilities to stick together. I think our defensive chemistry is going to be awful because we have so many defensive defensemen. Never mind. We take that all day long. If we don't win the Selkie, this thing is rigged. Cam Talbot backed up by Jonathan Quick. Very interesting duo. Hey, I just realized we have the perfect guy for being over the cap as well. I will say that Scradley gets the most points with... 88. 44 wins. We're in the playoffs. It's simulation time. You guys call yourselves a defensive team? We let up six goals and then eight goals in the first two games. That is gross. Kind of looking like defense does not win championships. We're going to need a big old TSN turning point if we want to stand any chance at even making the playoffs. We currently suck. I'm going to go do best lines and see if anything changes. Oh, that's interesting. We now get a 3-1-2. I'm a fan of that. What about defense? Nope, still zeros. Could this be the shuffle we needed? That's a big win. Brett Quenville. 62% team fit. And he is an A-, minus, which is the same as our coach. He has a 63% team fit. But he's also an offensive coach. What is this? It does not look like this was the one. I was hoping we would at least make playoffs, but... No. Even Steven is available. So is Mackenzie Wieger, Vinny Trocek, some good players. But I will refrain. Here we go. A first and Samson headed to San Jose in exchange for Charlie Coyle, Robbie Fabry, and Stenland. Wow. Two firsts and Jack Greaves going to Buffalo for Vinny Trocek, a fourth, a fifth, and Barclay Goudreau. Tanev Labushkin and a fourth are now a part of the Senators organization for a first and Jenik. Rory headed to the Jersey for a first and a second. Darnell Nurse packaged with a third for Boone Jenner and two seconds. There's another trade. If you want to know, there's probably going to be another one. I was incorrect. There was not another one. I wonder if I would have taken a goalie sooner if this could have gone different. The Stanley Cup final is between the Golden Knights and the Columbus Blue Jackets. We did awful. We did get sixth in the division though, 77 points. The Ottawa Senators win the President's Trophy convincingly. They had 10 up on New Jersey. Boston Bruins, 94 points. Don't qualify. You hate to see it. San Jose down at 18 makes it in. The Dallas Stars finished dead last. They have on their team... Connor McDavid! So they had the first pick. They also have Mika Zibanejad. They got Gus and Nett. Seth Jarvis. Wow, that is interesting. To be honest, that is more points than I thought we were going to get. 91 from Barkov is solid. Marshy and Stone both have 77. Kalorn 63. Logan Couture, 57. Not too shabby. Holy smokes, that is horrible. Both goaltenders are sub 900. Ew. Eckholm had 32 points. Schultz, 28. 24 apiece for these guys. Bucky had the most wins with 43 and a 908 save percentage. How about Markstrom? We could have had him. Puts up a 920 and 42 wins. You would. Kill McCarr leads defenseman, point a game, and we have Miro with 77, then a couple of 75s right here. J-Rob wins the Art Ross and probably the Rocket Richard with 58 goals. Yep. Okay. So he is going to win a lot of hardware. I'm going to put this in the video because I saw a comment a few videos ago asking how I view the other team's lines. You just go to team management and it's right there. The President's Trophy winning Ottawa Senators have Verhage, Nate Mack, and Pavelski. That is a scary first line. Good second line, Mr. Conn Smythe right there. Doesn't play for that team anymore. They're also quite stacked defensively. Vince Dunn, Drew Doughty, and Brent Burns. Well done. And there he is. Jacob Markstrom. In the finals, we have Columbus with Jimmy Superstar, Jack Eichel, and Kairou. I feel like I haven't seen Jimmy in forever. 84 is across the board for line number two. They got Michelli, Comfer, and Niederreiter. An extremely young defensive core. Their oldest defenseman is 26, but they have a lot of potential here in the future and they're in the finals right now they even have two young goalies with kachekov and justice golden knights look pretty solid they got thal playing with thompson and patrick kane so again on the third line that's crazy bo horvat second line center 87 overall again a weird defensive core McNabb on the first pair with chernak provorov and walker and then dahan with orlov okay that starts to explain things a little bit. Let's see who wins the Stanley Cup one game at a time. We have Columbus, we have the Golden Knights, and they take a 1-0 series lead. It is tied up at 1, though, so it becomes a best of 5. Columbus takes the lead. Will they go up 3-1, or will it become a best of 3? It is the latter. The advantage goes to the Golden Knights. It is a 3-2 series, and it is a best of... Best of yeah, no... Way. You're telling me a Stanley Cup playoff series is the best of seven? 
Since when? What I meant to say was, it's a game seven. So, here we are. Unfortunately, you can't real-time sim it or anything like that, but the champion is the Golden Knights. Toronto Marlies get the Calder. Andre Vasilevsky had a 916, but what about Kachekov? Nearly a 930. That is heartbreaking. EK65 had 20 points in 15 games. Latang was point a game. Jack Eichel and Kairu both had 35 points, but they didn't win the Stanley Cup, so... They are not getting the con Smythe. Probably going to be Patrick Kane. J-Rob does get the Art Heart combo, and we have Kale McCarr with the Norris. Not a surprise. I thought we were already on the Calder, but no. Bedsy gets the Lady Bing and the Calder. The con Smythe does go to Patrick Kane, and Markstrom gets the Vesna and the Jennings. Of course he does. Ryan Lindgren is your Masterton winner. Yonkman gets the Jack Adams. We didn't even win the Selkie. Sydney the Kidney is going to steal that from us. Robertson... Adding two more trophies to his case right here. Here is your playoff tree, and you know what? If you're still watching the video at this point, you're getting a little treat, because I am going to run it back real quick. Not gonna commentate a whole lot of it, just the important bits. But I want to take a goalie sooner and see if this team can be better. I think this is important enough to put in for the second time. Jabroni! Doesn't matter what your name is. What pick are we gonna get? That is also gonna be interesting, because we had 18 last time, I believe. We get... That is so rude. All right, we are getting a good goaltender in Thatcher Demko. I feel like I had to do that because last time I didn't take him, I regretted it. This time we're definitely getting the Selkie. Let's go, Sid. Once again, we're getting stuck with Doomlin and Dylan. You know what? This time I am going to sack the half star just so that we can stay cap compliant. So I'm going to not take any of these four and try to take three and a half. You could tell I was speed drafting and not paying attention because I don't think I took a backup goalie. Get ready to play 80 games, Thatcher. That first line chemistry is nice. They want Kopitar up there, really. Defensively, these two do not get along. Why? Okay, I'm starting to understand what you're saying now, Jabroni. Yep, I definitely did forget to take a backup. Right now, it's appearing that this game does not reward defense at all. I wonder how much different it will be if we sort by say, shooting or puck skills instead. We're kind of turning it around here, but this is still a tragedy. Probably not finishing above 500 regulation. Oh, never mind. We will do that. Well, wins and regulation losses, I should say. We still didn't make the playoffs. 19th place Dallas Stars get in. Interesting. So we actually were right there, kind of. The two Nova Scotia kids couldn't hook up for more points than that. Are you kidding me? You kidding me? Nason put up a nice amount of points. What on earth? 82 overall? That is strange. And Thatcher got cooked. Somehow Adam had a better save percentage. I know the sample size is obviously a lot smaller, but... What's going on here? Alright, we still couldn't make playoffs. I tried, but it is what it is. Appreciate you guys as always, and on that note, I'll see you soon.